Yes. So section 9.1 and 9.3, separable equations. Okay, out of the dozens of methods to solve differential equations, we were just going to cover only one method in this class. You want to see more about it? Take Math 53. In fact, well, it's a course most of you have to take. Okay, so separable equations and some applications to growth and decay. And well, so what's a differential equation? Well, a differential equation is an equation whose unknowns it's a function and some of its derivatives. So for example, if uh, uh, the equation may have a second order derivative, that means uh, that's a second order differential equation or the third order differential equation. We could include the third derivative, but we are going to go again like really, really simple to first order equations, ones that we can solve simply by separating the variables. All right, well, uh, so a very typical problem to begin with, we are given a function and we want to know if that function satisfies the differential equation. Well. Uh, this is something you may have seen before, but in a different way, like you're given x squared minus 9 equals to 0. You want to know whether x equals 4 is a solution. Well, what we do is plug in the value to the equation, and hopefully both sides are the same. So that's 4 squared minus 9 equals to 0. That's um, 16 minus 9, but 16 minus 9 is... Uh, is that a 7? But 7 is not equal to 0, so it's not going to be a solution, right? So it has to check both sides of the equation. Well, in this case, we will, we will use the... Um, we will use a function and its derivatives and determine whether this is a solution to the equation. For example, this differential equation, which, which calls for the first derivative plus two times the function equals to zero. We're, we're not gonna solve this equation. We're going to determine whether this equation is a solution. Well, so the differential equation calls for the first derivative. So what we do is find the first derivative of the, of the function, that is y prime equals to e to the negative 2x times negative 2. So we now have the function and the derivative. Let's put everything on, on the equation. So let's, let's highlight the original function to plug it in here. And let's highlight the derivative of the function and plug it in here. That's all we do. So, negative 2, okay, so negative 2, e to the negative 2x plus 2 times the original function, which is e to the negative 2x, is that equal to 0? Well, let's find that, so that's a negative 2, e to the negative 2x plus 2 e to the negative 2x, well, this turns out to be, okay, 0 equals to 0, so check so this is a solution and of course i mean there's other functions that could also be solution that depends on the initial condition that we that we use to solve the differential equation uh, we'll talk about initial condition because when we solve when we solve differential equations we are basically integrating functions and when we integrate those functions we get a plus c a constant of integration and depending on what's the point or what's the initial condition we may get different solutions for for the same for the same equation right so uh, let's see for example another solution here is 3e e to the negative 2x, negative 4e e to the negative 2x, etc. Well, that depends on how do we obtain that solution. But let's discuss the method of solution of separable differential equation. So, well, it's an equation that involves x and y and the derivatives of the function y. So, in this case, it has to have the form, there's a little typo here. So form, well not a typo, it's something missing. So if the equation is written in the form of g of y dy, 
equals f of x dx well then it's a separable it's a separable equation because we're separating the y's from the x's we're having the y's on the left hand side and the x's on the right hand side it's in a very similar way that when we solve algebraic equations you know 3x plus 5 equals x minus 7 well you solve you left the variables on the left hand side and the constant terms on the right hand side it's the same way so subtract x and that's 2x and subtract 5 that's a negative 12 x equals 6 right so that's how we solve algebraic equation you know variables on the left hand side constant terms on the right hand side but in this case because we have functions on both sides it's the y's on the left and the x's on the right all right so let's do let's do one example dy dx equals x over y all right so separate the variables have all the terms that contain x on the, on the right hand side and all the y's on the left hand side so how about cross multiplying in this case that's going to do it in this case so we're going to have y dy equals x dx well in this case we have the variable separated all we do is undo the differentials undo the derivatives by doing the inverse operation which is integrate integral of y squared equals y squared over 2 equals uh, in this case let me make sure okay x squared over 2 plus c notice something in this case one thing worth notice is that i'm only adding a constant on only one side of the equation not on both sides okay um, because let me explain that why so if we did y squared over 2 plus let's call it a c1 okay and let's call the concept of integration on the right hand side let's call it c2 okay let's solve for x squared over 2 plus c2 minus c1 but okay these constants are arbitrary constants that are to be determined based on the initial condition or uh, that is based on a particular point that satisfies the equation so we don't know the values of c2 minus c1 however what we do is a process called absorption And by absorption, this is simply C. One constant minus another constant, what is that? It's not just another constant. So that's why we only add one constant only on the right-hand side. <laughs> All right. Well, in this case, let's keep solving the equation. Multiply both sides by 2. And that y squared equals x squared plus c in this case notice i'm only canceling those two with the variable terms but this constant term which happens to be any number what is two times a constant isn't just another another constant okay so that's just the and we call this the general solution that's when we have the constant c in a later example we will find that constant of integration and we will call that the particular solution in the meantime let's keep solving some of the examples here all right letter b looks similar to the to letter a however y and x are inverted this time so the way we're going to separate the variables okay so first of all what i'm going to do is multiply both sides by dx to have all the x's on the right hand side and then from here um, we're going to be left with dy equals y over x and dx and all we need is move that y to the right hand to the left hand side and we do that by multiplying both sides by 1 over y or dividing by y 
So that's going to be dy over y equals dx, cancel the y's, dx over x. And now that we have the variables separated, what do we do? Integrate, Integrate both sides. What's the integral of dy over y? Ln of y. Ln of absolute value of y, be careful. Ln of absolute value of y equals ln of absolute value of x, and only on the right hand side we add that constant of integration, which, which is the one that it's already absorbed from the one of both sides, okay? Well, what do we do to get rid of the natural log? Exponentiate both sides, e and e, right? And a few things are going to occur here. Number one, uh, first we're going to get the absolute value of y equals, uh, using the product rule of exponentials, e to the ln of absolute value of x times e to the c. Okay? So absolute value of y equals, okay, we can cancel e and ln x, Okay, that's going to leave us with absolute value of x times, in this case, what's e to the c? What's e to a, any constant? Just another constant, all right? So let's just call it c. And in this case, okay, this is what we're going to have. Absolute value of y equals c absolute value of x. But because in this case, y and x can pretty much take any value when we when we solve for y this y right here could be plus or minus c times absolute value of x notice we're not gonna we're not gonna get rid of the value of the absolute value bars for the for the variable x only for the y because that's the one that we're solving for question which one? Oh, right here? Okay. So, this is e to the sum of these two terms, right? So, basically, we have e to the a plus b, which is the same as e to the a times e to the b by loss of exponents. And that's why I wrote it like this. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, the thing here is, uh, we are not going to leave this in terms of plus or minus, because essentially what we have with this plus or minus, there's an invisible one. What's plus or minus one times a constant? Isn't that just another constant? Whether it's positive or, ne or negative, it's, it's just a constant. And this is simply C absolute value of X. Now, what's the difference between these two exercises? Well, here we were able to obtain well, different color, explicit solution, because we were able to express uh, y in terms of x explicitly. However, in the previous example, this is an implicit solution. And in some cases, answers are fine whether in implicit or explicit, well, depending on the situation. In this case, this is fine, because if you keep solving for y, you would get plus minus the square root of x squared plus c. And well, you're getting essentially two solutions. So in this case, it's fine to leave it in implicit form, right? Actually, that plus or minus in the radical that we have here is not going to get absorbed by the constant of integration in the same way that it got absorbed here in, in, the, in, in the other example. Another presentation for uh, differential equations, instead of having explicitly Leibniz notation like dy dx or dy dt, you will be given the notation, the prime notation. So it's important to understand which one it's going to be the, the uh, dependent variable and which one is the independent variable. So, 
the variable that has the prime at the, the prime symbol attached to it that's going to be the dependent variable and just look for the other letter that's going to be representing the independent variable so in this case first of all we need to rewrite y prime as dy but not dx because we don't have x as this time we have dt and well that's going to be equal to 2y dt okay no not dt actually just t and as usual just um, separate the variables so 2t dt over y okay so divide both sides by y and multiply both sides by by dt and we can integrate both sides so the integral of dy over y that's ln of absolute value of y and that's 2t squared plus c or over 2 actually and this reduces to ln of absolute value of y equals to t squared plus c and well in this case we can we can find a, an explicit solution because this is not going to give us a plus or minus well technically yes but in this case the absorption is going to help a lot here so e e exponentiate both sides cancel the ln with e to get absolute value of y equals e to the t squared times e to the c in the same way that we did it before using properties of exponential functions and this is going to be absolute value of y equals to um, e to the t squared times some constant right because e to the c is just another c you know what let me just write it down in front of it okay so <clears throat> let's use the absolute value definition to get rid of those absolute value bars that's going to be a plus minus c e to the t squared but again in this case because that plus minus it's right in front as a coefficient of the constant of integration that plus or minus can disappear by absorption so that's e to the or rather c e to the t squared too many details i have discussed over here why okay let me take it from here okay let me let's see how about i do the integral of dy over y equals to t dt well the integral right this is ln of y equals t squared plus c but if we exponentiate notice i'm not writing those absolute value bars that's y e to the c e to the t squared i mean i'm skipping many steps if i did this we are getting the exact same answer isn't it however it's important to consider all these details because well technically i did a mistake here when integrating dy over y it has to strictly be the natural log of the absolute value and then yes those absolute value bars go away by considering its definition plus or minus but that plus or minus goes away by absorption with the constant of integration and that's how we get still the same um and uh, the same um the same the same answer in this case all right all right let's have a look at this one dy dx equals well e to the x plus y can be rewritten as e to the x times e to the y and then from here we can separate the variables dy over e to the y equals e to the x dx and well be careful here because some of you integrated the left hand side and gave me an ln of e to the y well because it's in the denominator integrate no be careful here number one what you want to do is move the e to the y as e to the negative y dy equals e to the x dx and integrate so the, the integral of e to the negative y is simply e to the negative y times the negative one 
equals e to the x plus c. So now we want to solve the exponential equation, not a logarithmic equation. So number one, well, I cannot take ln on both sides just yet. I need first to get rid of this negative. And well, when I'm, and we do it, we get that by multiplying or dividing both sides by negative one. But be careful what gets multiplied by negative one. So e to the negative y, and negative e to the x, and c times negative one. Well, you could think it's a negative c, but I mean, any number multiplied by a constant, it's just another constant, okay? So we may now take ln on both sides. And cancel ln, negative y, ln of, I'm gonna write the positive first, c minus e to the x, and divide both sides by negative one. y equals to negative ln of c minus e to the x. Final answer. All right. And these four examples that we just did are examples of general solutions, yes? Um, in this case, because c is an arbitrary constant, could you move the x in front of the ln or would that not work? Mm, which part right here? So, here? Wouldn't it be... Okay, because e to the x, you could change to e to the x times e to the c, so if it would be e to the x times c, right? Oh, not in this case, because we're integrating e to the, e to the x itself, which is e to the x, and this plus c gets produced oh, because of the constant of integration. Okay. Oh, no, it's the plus, uh -huh, the plus okay. constant of integration. Mm -hmm. For the next example, let's solve the differential equation x, y, y prime equals 100x with the initial condition of y of 0 equals to 90. Okay, let's go back to what you learned back in Calc 1. So when you, when you first learn to integrate, so the integral of x, uh, the integral of x, I guess, yes, dx, that's x squared plus c. And that plus C is because, well, there's infinitely many possibilities of functions whose derivatives are x, all right? So, over 2, I mean. And, well, you could have, for example, find the derivative of x squared over 2 plus 3. Isn't that the same as x? Find the derivative of x squared over 2 plus 5. Isn't that the same as x? Find the derivative of x cubed over 2 plus pi to the e, I don't know, isn't that the same x? Well, so you have infinitely many possibilities. The graphic approach to this is that you are getting uh, the form of a parabola, you know? And well, what you are getting when you integrate, it's you're getting the portrait of a family of functions. And that family of functions is going to depend on what initial condition is. So for example, you could have gotten, well, a function that contains with the plus 5, well, shifted by 5. So that's another member of the family of functions that you are obtaining by integration. What about x squared over 2? minus 7, well, that's one shifted 7 units down. Well, that's another member of a family that it's also a parabola, but it lives somewhere else with, uh, at another different set of points. So that's really what the integral is. But they didn't tell you this uh, because, well, not to overwhelm you with the differential equations vocabulary. And in fact, when you will, when you learn when you first learn about integration, you learned about it in terms of finding the area under the curve and then infinitely many rectangles, you know. So for example, over here we found a family of functions, you know, exponential functions, you know, it could go through here, maybe here, maybe even more steep, depending on that value of c. Or if it's a negative, it goes down like this, you know, depending on how big the negative value is. Over here, what we got? Uh, this is basically y squared minus x squared equals to c. Isn't this a family of hyperbolas, maybe? 
So that's what we're getting, the portrait of a family of hyperbolas. Well, which member of the family did you get? Well, that depends on the initial condition. So we're going to solve this differential equation right here. X, Y plus Y prime equals 100 X. Of course, we're going to get the general solution. That's going to be the general portrait of the whole family of functions. And then we're going to look at the function at a particular solution. That is the member of the family that contains the point 0, 90. All right. So first of all, let's solve the equation. So number one, oh, interesting. So let's let's see how we go about this equation so let's solve for the y prime term that's 100x minus xy let's replace y prime with dy dx and factor x 1 minus or 100 rather minus y and from here we can we can um, we can start separating the variables, that's dy over 100 minus y equals x dx. We're ready to integrate both sides. Well, the, integra the integral on the right-hand side is the easiest one, x squared over 2 plus c, but the one on the left-hand side might need uh, a u substitution. A pretty basic one, u equals ln, oh no, not ln, 100 minus y du negative dy, all right, where dy is really negative du. So this is the integral of negative du over u, and that's a negative ln of absolute value of u, equals x squared plus c, x squared over 2 plus c. And let's just back substitute for the u function. So that's a negative ln absolute value of 100 minus y, equals x squared over 2 plus c and well let's try and solve for y over here so we can get first the general solution number one multiply both sides by negative one and this will be ln 100 minus y so that's going to be negative x squared over 2, but recall that c times any number, whether positive or negative, that is just any other constant. All right? And well, of course, yes, we can do this. Let's exponentiate both sides. That's uh, absolute value of 100 minus y equals e to the negative x squared over 2 times e to the c, which by absorption will become uh, just another new c. That's equal to c e to the negative x squared over 2. Absolute value of 100 my equals 100, uh, equals this quantity, absolute value of 100 minus y. And of course, let's get rid of those absolute value bars, 100 minus y, provided we put a plus minus c e to the negative x. I know this will disappear by absorption with the constant of integration, but we need to, 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 to do this part of the process. So that's 100 minus y equals simply c e to the negative x squared over 2. And why not? Let's write it as a side note. Plus or minus c becomes just c by absorption. Okay. And well, let's solve for y. So negative y equals to uh, c e to the negative x squared over 2 minus 100. And dividing both sides by negative 1 and multiplying both sides by negative 1, we get y by itself. And all we do is simply reverse the order. So this is our general solution. Okay, so this is a general solution. Okay, let's see how that looks like in our graphing calculator, but uh, mode uh, function. And 
let's see let me just give well let me give an arbitrary value for for the c so let's say 100 minus 1 e to the negative x squared divided by 2 Okay, maybe by because of the hundred, I'm not going to be able to see the graph because it's ha it has like a horizontal asymptote at a hundred. Let's see if zooming fit. Yes, it's going to look like this. All right. Uh huh. So yes, yeah, it's like the notice that x squared term that looks like the like, like the Gaussian function. You know, the one that shows up in probability and statistics for the normal distribution in case you have taken that class already. But notice in this case it's inverted because of the negative sign in front of it. All right? So maybe we're going to have other functions that look like this depending on the value of C. In this case, I chose for the sake of simplicity, the value of C equals to 1. All right? So, well, that's the general solution. Let's find the particular solution with y of 0 equals to 90. The way we represent or, or that we interpret this, that means x equals to 0 and y equals to 90. What we're going to do is plug in this point on both the y equals to 90 and x equals to 0 to find the value of c. And well, so that's 90 equals 100 minus c e to the negative 0 squared over 2. And c, okay, e to the 0 basically is in that, well, e to the 0, which is 1, minus c and that that's a negative 10 equals negative c c equals to 10 so we're going to go back to our or to our general solution and we write minus 10 e to the negative x squared over 2 this will be our particular solution Let's see how it look it looks like with respect to the one that we just that I just typed on the graphing calculator. So okay, let me type the whole thing again. So we can see both of them. A hundred minus ten second e to the negative x squared over two. All right. So it's gonna have basically the same shape. Right, but because of the initial condition that we have, so we're again we're finding the member of the family that passes through the point 0, 090. We could have found another member of the family that passes through 0, 050, for example, or any other point. So uh, zoom fit so we can see the whole thing. In fact, it's even uh, it's even larger but because it's multiplied by 10. That number that we subtract is being multiplied by 10. So we have a, a more stretched, uh, fun vertically stretched fun of graph over here. All right. And well, that's one example on what do we do when we want to find a, a particular solution. Well, we should be given an order pair. Well, typically represented in function notation, y of 0 equals a number. Growth and decay. This is a topic that you have done multiple times in your high school algebra, intermediate algebra, algebra 1 or 2, I'm not sure which one. Uh, if you took like that class, uh, what is it called? Well, some, some of you might have taken it as a free calculus in high school, or it's called math analysis. I don't know the names, if they have changed. Or if you took Math 72 here at Southwestern College, well, you got to growth and decay. And also in college algebra or pre-calculus here at Southwestern College, that's a topic that you cover as well. Uh, but what's new about this? Now we are going to derive where is this equation that you know from precalculus in particular, um, y or rather p 
at any time that's uh, that the, the population it's the initial population e to the kt and well if that sign of k is negative well we're talking about decay but otherwise if that k is positive we're talking about growth and then you went over many examples on bacteria growth population growth and radioactive decay or well population also for the population dies well there's a decay in the population as well and based on this uh, very simplistic model and well what where is this function coming from anyway well so everything stems from the fact that the rate of change of a quantity population of a quantity let's call it p population it's proportional to its value so that quantity well the um, the population amount grows with respect to time so that's the dpdt you know some change in the population size with respect to time and it's proportional to its size all right so well let's solve this this differential equation by separation of variables so that's a dp equals or dp over p equals k dt and we can integrate both sides that's ln of absolute value of p equals to k kt plus c and well some of the you know uh how can i how can i put this um I know technically we're looking at all this about the absolute values of course I mean in this case we could be a little bit more liberal about the absolute value bars for this logarithmic function and the reason is because we only consider positive amounts of people right when we're dealing with a population I mean have you gone to a community where there's negative 3,000 inhabitants? I mean, that's kind of weird, right? So there's no way we can have... So in this case, just ln of p. That's fine. To make this a lot simpler. Still exponentiate both sides. p equals e to the kt plus c. And p equals c e to the kt. All right? So this is the general solution. This is the general solution. Well, let's find a particular solution when the initial, that is when t equals zero, we're gonna have, surprise, surprise, the population is the initial population. I mean, in words, you know. Well, so let's plug in t equals to zero and replace p with p initial. And well, that's uh, p initial, c e to the zero, which is simply c. Now going back to the particular solution, replace c with the corresponding value, which is p initial, e to the kt. And isn't that the exponential model that they just ask you to memorize in intermediate algebra, in precalculus. Well, they, they just ask you to memorize this function, this equation, because, well, back then you didn't have the skills of integration and differential equations to deduct where it's coming from. So they just told you, oh, well, this is an exponential because, well, there's a rate of change implied. Well, things tend to grow or decay depending on the point of view. So that's basically what they told you in that class. Uh, but of course, this is a very, this is a very limited or a, a toy, if you will, like, like a toy example, because if you think about it, nothing grows forever, all right? So there's other models like the logistic model and, uh, or the limited growth, uh, the limited growth process, you know? But uh, 